friends, Blake Shook here. I started out with two hives in my backyard and over the course of several years have built up to about 30,000 beehives. And my goal in these videos is to teach you all the practical things I've learned all along the way and apply everything I've learned to you with just a few hives in your backyard. So let's talk about one of the only methods that I've found that really can handle varroa mites without any sort of treatment. So this is a purely um, mechanical method of treating for varroa mites uh, or controlling varroa mites I should say and it's fairly simple you just have to do the right things at the right time um, and so the ingredients you need to pull this off is you need a green drone frame so this is a frame that um, the cells are larger than a worker bee cell I've got a little bit of comb on this one but they need to draw it out more but you can see how large these cells are. They are much larger than worker bee cells. And so when the bees draw out this comb, um, it's going to be the size of a drone cell, not a worker bee cell. And what that does is it tells the queen when she's laying, hey, I need to lay a drone in this cell because she measures it before she lays eggs in it. And so she'll lay drones in this frame instead of worker bees. So you need one of these. You need a queen cage um, or a queen clip and then stand by. You also need one of these. This is a queen isolation cage, and I'll show you how to use it in a minute. And that's it. Um, you need uh, ideally powdered sugar and a screen bottom board, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. So that's really all you need. You need that queen isolation cage, the green drone frame, and a queen cage, and you can control varroa mites. Thankfully, the uh, queen wasn't in this cage. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't be throwing it all over the bee yard if she was. Um, but that's all you really need. Pretty inexpensive, pretty simple. So your first step is you just need one of these green drone frames that is drawn out. So instead of being foundation, you need it to be drawn out. So if you're at the very beginning of spring, that's pretty simple. You can just put it anywhere in your brood box um, or in your honey super and the bees are going to draw it out. If you're trying to draw it out later in the year like I am, then you can't just put it up in a honey super. Um, you've got to put it kind of in the heart of activity inside the hive. And so I'm going to remove our second brood box and I'm going to find where my brood begins in my bottom box. So it looks like right here. So this is the frame that my uh, brood begins on and I'm going to take the frame next to it that is just solid honey and I'm going to pull that out put it in a different hive and I'm going to put my foundation right next to that brood so I'm not splitting up the brood nest I'm just putting my drone front frame that I need drawn out right next to the brood in my brood box and that just ensures that the bees are going to draw it out uh, especially if I feed them maybe some one-to-one -one sugar water for a couple weeks, they'll draw that frame out and then I'll have it ready after I harvest my honey and I'm ready to treat for varroa mites. So we'll leave this frame in here for, you know, two weeks or so until the bees have drawn it out. I don't want to leave it in there too long because I don't want the queen to lay drones in it yet. If you have that drone frame in there year round, she'll just lay tons of drones in it and it helps propagate varroa mites because varroa mites prefer drone brood over worker bee brood. So I'm only gonna leave it in there as long as uh, it takes to draw it out. And then I'm gonna pull it out of the hive and I'm gonna freeze it until I'm ready to use it. So step one, get them to draw out one deep green drone frame. Okay, we're ready for step two. So our bees have mostly drawn out uh, our deep drone frame. So it's not perfect but they did a decent job. You can see all the comb here that they've, uh, they've drawn out. And so we've got a pretty good amount of comb and they can continue to draw it out a little bit more uh, at this next stage, but you want it um, mostly drawn out if at all possible. So we're ready for step two. I'm gonna leave that frame at this stage that they drew out in the freezer because um, I don't actually need it yet. I just brought it out here to show it to you guys. So stage two is we've got to find our queen and we've got a cager. We're going to put her in a cage. So 
we have to create a, a brood break in this hive. And so we do that by finding our queen. She's, I'm pretty sure she's in the second box because my top box here is pretty much just honey. So I'm gonna go through here and find my queen. And then you can, uh, you can get a queen clip if you prefer and uh, catch her in that queen clip and leave her in that queen clip. Some people find it easier to um, some people find it easier to catch a queen uh, using the clip. That way, don't, they don't have to use their fingers. Um, I'm comfortable grabbing her, and uh, here she is, and putting her in a queen cage. So I'm gonna grab her by the wings. So here she is, and I'm gonna put her in a queen cage. Um, here we go, and then I'm just going to cover that hole with duct tape so that she can't escape. So I've got my queen bee in a queen cage. Any kind of cage is perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be a plastic cage. Um, it can be a wooden cage, a queen clip, anything to keep her safely contained. And so she's in here. I've got the opening covered with duct tape so she can't escape. And then I'm just going to put her right back in the hive. Um, inside this cage. I'm just going to put it right in the middle of the hive uh, between two frames. I'm going to push the frames together nice and tight so she doesn't fall down. And so now she's just inside that cage wedged in between the frames. I'm going to leave her like this for 13 days. So queen stays in the cage trapped for 13 days and then we're ready to come back for the exciting stages. Okay, we're ready for step three. So this is where it gets exciting. So our queen has been caged inside this hive for 13 days. So there should be um, very little brood, very little to no brood. There'll be a little bit of capped brood here and there, but there should be no eggs, no larva. A lot of that adult brood should be getting ready to hatch out. Um, so at this point, we need our queen isolation cage, and then we need to pull our frame of drone comb out of the freezer. Um, and we're going to install everything in this hive. I do want to note, this is really a treatment option or a, a control option you need to plan ahead for. The tough part is if you're trying to do this during a dearth, it's going to be hard to get bees to draw out that drone frame uh, when you're in the middle of a dearth because they just don't like drawing out comb. So this is the kind of thing you usually want to plan ahead for if at all possible. So um, we're just going to open up this hive we're going to check on our queen, make sure that our queen is, I'm sure she's still caged, but we want to make sure she's okay. So she's been in this cage 13 days. She's still great. She's running around. She looks very happy. Uh, so we're going to set her aside. As we look in this hive, you know, we see that it's pretty much broodless. I mean, it, that's, that was our goal. We're trying to create a brood break. Um, there's almost no brood anywhere in this hive. Uh, the you know, this is a frame out of the center of the brood nest that should be full of brood, but because we caged the queen, it is not. So what we're gonna do at this point is we're going to take two frames. I've got a frame of foundation, and I'm just gonna take one of these outside frames out we're going to take two frames out of this hive and then in the very center we are going to install our queen isolation cage right in the center of this hive. We're going to push these frames tight back up against it. And then we should be able to install one of those frames back in just like that. So. So you'll, you'll have one extra frame most likely, but you should be able to fit, if you've got a feeder like we do, you should be able to fit seven frames and a feeder. And then we're going to take our frame of drone comb and we're gonna insert it right into that isolation box. Then we're gonna take our queen who's been eagerly waiting to be released um, and we are going to take that duct tape off the cage very carefully, 
because what we don't want is for her to fly out. So as I'm pulling this duct tape off, I'm putting my finger over the hole so that uh, she doesn't fly out on us because that's always not what we, terrible. It's always terrible. It's not what we want. So I've got her in this cage and I, my goal is to get her into this isolation cage. So I've just got my finger over the hole um, and I'm just going to insert the opening down into this cage. And I'm just going to kind of drop that cage into this box. And then I'm going to put the cover back on it. it takes a little bit of uh, fandangling to get the cover on, but you want to make sure that cover's on good and tight, just like that. So now I have my queen trapped in this isolation box with a frame of drone comb. And now we're going to let it sit like this for 10 to 11 days. What's going to happen is she has nowhere to lay except for on that frame of drone comb. So she's going to fill that frame with drones. There's going to be no other brood in the hive. It's all going to, the final amounts of brood are going to hatch out over the next 10 days that she's laying in here. And then all the varroa mites in this hive have nowhere to go. There's no developing brood in this hive except for this drone brood. And varroa mites love drone brood. So all those varroa mites are then going to run and get into that drone brood that's being laid. And then at day 10, as all that drone brood is being capped, um, and you can come back and monitor it. And once you've got a significant amount of capped drone brood, um, then uh, you're ready for the next and final stage. Okay, so for the fourth and final stage on this video, um, I've actually, I'm not to that stage yet, so I can't show it to you in real time, but it's pretty simple. So after 10 to 11 days, we come back. This frame in the isolation box should be full of drone brood. Um, cap, and a lot of it should, some of it should be capped, some of it will still be uncapped, but it's going to have sucked all the varroa mites from that hive into this isolation box with all that drone brood. I'm going to take that drone frame out of the isolation box. I'm going to place the queen back into the hive where she belongs. I'm going to remove the isolation box completely, the frame and the isolation box. It's all coming out. I shake all the bees off. The queen gets released back into the hive. The hive returns to normal. And then I freeze that frame full of drone brood, and that's going to kill all the varroa mites. And then I'll just leave it in the freezer until the next time I'm ready to use that drone frame again. At which point I would just put it back in a strong hive. They'll clean out all the dead drone brood and then I'm ready to reuse that frame at a future date. The last thing I'm going to do to this hive is um, once I pulled all that out, I'm just going to take about um, a cup of powdered sugar. I'm going to sprinkle it across the top bars. And then I'm going to use a bee brush and dust all that powdered sugar between the frames. I'm going to do that on the bottom box. If I have a second box, I'm going to put it back up on top, do the same thing. And uh, this is where it's critical that you have a screen bottom board because that powdered sugar is going to knock any final varroa mites left over on the adult bees down through the screen bottom board and they're going to die. At this point, you can do a varroa mite test uh, maybe a day or two later. Make sure your varroa mite levels are under two per hundred bees, which they should easily be there, and you're good to go. You know, you can test your hive again in a couple of months. They might need the process done again, um, but once or twice a year should be able to control varroa mites, and you're not using any chemicals at all.